Along that same sort of open question about writing about war, you, unlike the uh, the prior two panelists, you were actually you actually served in, in Vietnam. Um, so, did you have preconceived notions about what it would be like to write this war story? Uh, and, and just let me add something that I learned upstairs. You didn't set out to write a political thriller. It sounded like. Uh, actually, I should set out to write a black comedy. Yeah. Um, military. People are very funny, and I wrote quite a long three, four chapters um, that were funny to me and funny to other people who were doing military. And, and, and uh, I tried it out on some civilians, and they wept. Uh, and my agent also to convince me, no, you have to be more commercial in this, you can't be ridiculous. And, and, and what I wrote was actually based on a totally true incident. Uh, the same uh, battalion commander, uh, signal battalion commander, who decided to launch a, an amphibious uh, landing in Vietnam, like Marines, right? And so 800 signal men, trained to be troposphere experts and telephone line and all that, tried to attempt this amphibious landing, and it was all hell broke loose, and people were dangling upside down from nets on the sides of ships, flanging against the side of their helmets. Grenades were falling down onto the floating ramp below. Um, you know, stuff falling out of their packs, their pockets. It was so it's all terrifying and insane until they got to the beach and uh, they set up a you know, perimeter to defend themselves against the back and all that. And along came two figures in the morning haze wearing well, some kind of white, and the many officers thought it was maybe their parents some kind of white flag to negotiate. And it was two young ladies with white button-down shirts and wearing their keys. Um, they, they landed in Phong Tha, which was eventually made into a uh, rec recreation center for uh, the troops in Vietnam. So all of this terror and everything was absolutely nothing. Anyway, I think my word for it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but within 24 hours, you know, they got it. <coughs> and it was still pretty funny, but it was, uh, tragic consequences, some of the nonsense that the officers had um, conceived as their, as their duty. Um, my, my problem was that, um, almost the reverse, I had a problem of, I had to add fiction in, about 10 percent, so nobody would get arrested, <laughs> concerned with some of my colleagues, and uh, to try and dramatize, because the real truth is that most of the war fiction is incredibly romanticized. Um, and, and it's almost, there's almost a pornography of war literature, which I unfortunately refer to as dick but I advise not to call it that, but it really is that. Um, and recently a friend of mine from the suburbs asked me, what, what is, you know, you know, you know I've written a book, and what is it really like to you know, stand guard on the perimeter of a war zone? I said, well, go home, pick up your war from your lawn, you know, your lawn ornament. Go in the bathroom. Um, Stand in the shower, have your wife, you know, there's no windows in this bathroom. Stand in the shower, have your wife turn out the lights and turn on the shower and stand in for two hours holding the door, 14 pounds of door. That's about what it's like, really. But when you read it in the literature, you read it in the book, especially in films, you can always see everything, you know, even at night, everything's visible, and everyone's blasting away. And, uh, really, you're, you're, you're in black, total blackness. If something happens, that's about all you see, it's nothing. You're just pulling the trigger. And then people ask you, you know, what is it like to kill somebody? You know, who? I mean, you're just blasting away. Mm -hmm. Well, since we decided not to do a reading, um, let me just sort of give 